Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and for this video, I'm doing it slightly different than before. Actually, very different than before. I'm just gonna be honest here, I'm not gonna talk about any of these variants that I evolved in this video. As you can see, this is a whole compilation of the diamond variants I evolved in the past 6 months or so. And the reason why I don't want to talk about them is because most of these variants, I evolved them purely for fun and nothing else. So I guess the question you have here is, what am I gonna talk about then? Well, while you enjoy watching me flex and evolve my diamonds, I'm going to be rambling about this series and why I started it, but also relating it back to this YouTube journey and my own personal growth. And I know this is not a topic for everyone, so feel free to, you know, mute me or whatever. But for those of you who wanted to stay, here goes. So this Diamond Evolution series is literally the first ever video I made in this channel. You can check it out, scroll through my history, my uploads, and you can see that the first video I made was this. And frankly, back then, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just wanted to put something out there. And funnily enough, people seemed to enjoy it, so I just kept on uploading more. This was kind of the exploratory phase of how I started. I was uploading whatever I had or made and was really just for fun and for my own creative output. My background is in the sciences and I just need an outlet for a creative endeavor. Unfortunately, I'm terrible at art and music so I decided, what the hell, let me try content creation for a change. And I liked it. Everything you see in this channel, whether it's the thumbnails or the editing or the intro, that's me. I did everything by myself. Well, except for the profile picture you see here because that was commissioned. And I loved the process and it just felt so good not having an endpoint and just simply trying and experimenting to see what works and what doesn't. Making thumbnails, for example, is like one of my favorite part of this journey. I dare say it's kind of the main reason why I even started YouTube. I just wanted to make good graphics. And I gotta be honest, it has been a hit or miss. I look back to some of my older videos and even some of my recent ones and I sometimes think, Man, that looks terrible, but I have no idea how to fix it. Oh well, moving on. But there are a few thumbnails which I'm very proud of, and the thumbnails for this Diamond Evolution series is one of them. It didn't always look like this though. I couldn't find the old thumbnail, but I basically cropped an image of the variants I evolved and stitched them together. So people actually knew what I was evolving before they even clicked the button. It was terrible and not great. I changed it after someone made a comment of making it a bit more mysterious, and so I did. And it did provide some positive benefits to my channel as it caught the attention of some people. Anyway, as time went on, I suddenly got myself into this position where I'm making guides and being a resource for new players to go to, and I embraced it and made more along the way. I'm gonna be honest, the true reason why I made those guides in the first place is really for my own personal growth. I find guides to be the easiest content to make because I kinda like showing off what I know, and if it helps people find it useful, that's a big bonus for me. As I make more and more of these guides, I did start to think about the kind of content I'm making and started to emphasize more about the value that my videos can bring. So looking back to this series, I started to question and ask myself whether this evolution series can be more than just a simple flex. And I did try to incorporate that to a varying degrees of success. I tried making commentaries on why I evolved them, and I even tried to do this cheeky before and after kind of thing to see where these variants are and whether I invested on them. But to be honest, I didn't really like the approach and I don't know how to make them better. So for a while, this series were really mostly filler videos for the month that I can make in one or two hours while I work on the videos that have more value to bring. But the underlying reason why I made this video in the first place or the series in this first place is because I kind of want to show people that this game is free to play and it's actually very possible for you to have these much diamonds without paying a single cash. Although I guess that is really up for debate because even though I don't pay any monetary value in this game, I didn't buy any cash, I did spend a lot of time and it's debatable that time is way more important than money. Now what is really the point of what I'm trying to say here? Basically, I think this particular video and this series of Evolving Diamonds is a nice end to a chapter for this channel. It was the first series I did, the first video I ever made when I started, and I felt it was time to put an end to it as my channel grows and I have a clear view of where I want to go. 
I made a post a few days ago about a rough roadmap of the topics I want to cover and where I see this channel is heading next. Just as a teaser for what I'm planning to do. I guess you can say I have passed the exploratory phase and I sort of know what I want to make. Next year, I'm trying to emphasize more in quality and in every video that I make, I want to make sure that there's some kind of value that I bring. I'm still experimenting on how to deliver my content. There are things I tried this year which worked fine, but I'd like to improve on that so it's not just a static image with text, which is basically how I delivered the review videos for the diamond variants and the prestige abilities. I suppose that's all I really wanted to say. Enjoyed this compilation of diamonds I evolved, again, they're mostly evolved for fun, and the fact that I'm evolving them this late means I prioritized other variants which are undoubtedly better and stronger. But as a last note, I just want to say thank you all very much for watching my videos, regardless of what I put out. I literally had no idea I would be in this position, which is really cool. And yeah, I'd like to move away from just making guides, but we'll see how things proceed next year. So thank you all very much for the support, and I'll see you in the next video. Right, so I was planning to stop my rambling there, but it seems like we're not even past half through the video. So you know what? I lied. I will be making some commentary here and now. And whoa, I evolved baseline. Again, this one is for the memes. There's really no reason why you should invest in a baseline. And then this time around, I evolved big top. Again, decent Bella. Could be more. It's one of those variants where I feel like it's very, very old and so outdated that they should get a new signature ability altogether. Her signature ability of reviving and coming up with these unflinching and stuff is all good and all. Just combine them into one signature ability and give them another one. And then we have Stage Fright. Now, Stage Fright has some uses. I've seen some niche uses of using her as a counter to Immortal Fiber because of her ability to inflict Curse and Hex when the opponent like gets reduced to like 25%, I think. So that prevents Immortal Fiber from exploding on your face and allows st Stage Fright to finish and get a blockbuster finish in Rift Battles without much worry. Right, okay, next video. We're evolving first up, I think, is... Oh, Infernal Twin, okay. So Infernal Twin is one of the better bronzes out there, but it doesn't really suit my playstyle. When I play Fuqua, I just want to spam Loves of Love straight into the, the opponent's face without having to worry about getting punished. With Infernal Twin, you kind of have to, like, block sometimes or intercept, and it's just a bit more... Not... It doesn't really sync with how I usually play Fuqua, but it's still a pretty good variant, kind of like a sheltered version of Fuqua. It's really quite nice, but it's not my favorite variant. And then we have Sunday School, a double, a water double. Right, so there's really no use in investing in a Sunday School, pretty much because, yeah, she's not a great support, and yes, she has Chaos ability, but Fire, Elemental, Defense teams aren't very popular. Yeah, she doesn't even have like a niche she can use, but maybe, who knows, maybe in the future. I did max her though. And then we have Scrub. Oh, this is just a shiny flex, honestly. Yeah. Shiny. Shiny diamond. God, why does this take so long? Okay, next, what is it? Oh, uh, I don't have much choices here. Scared Stiff. Okay, unlike unlike Stage Frights, Scared Stiff doesn't really have a great niche. She's meant to be used as a defender. Her ability to, like... I forgot what her... I, 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 for, I don't know how to, like, explain it, but... You know her ability. It's really easily to be countered. You just use a Valentine or a multi-hit fighter, and it, she, she goes down really fast. Like, there's nothing to worry about. And then Dark. I think this is Underdog. Yeah. Underdog has a quite useful niche against Scratching Post if you're struggling with that. Because every time he gets a debuff, he gets like an armor and haste. And that haste counters the slow... Slow? The slow. Yeah, the slow from um, Scratching Post, so you're never gonna get stunned. 
which is really neat if you're if you're having trouble with that node. And I think that's it for this video. Time to go for the, to the next one. Right, next we have Pyrotechnique. Right, she's one of the better elemental variants. Like, I can still use her and deal some pretty good damage. Definitely not the best Valentine, although the Wither can be useful. The Enraged Tax is really, really nice though. But yeah, you kind of have to use her dash attack kind of twice in order to gain those Enrages very quickly. She does alright. She's a pretty alright Valentine. Nothing much to say, I guess. Then water we have, I think this was understudy? Yeah, understudy. Understudy is a bronze, doesn't really do much in higher tiers, can't really do anything. Bronze stats really hinders her and her ability is too basic. Yeah, this is just a meme. Don't invest in understudy. She can be useful as a bronze carry though, if, you're, if you need one for some reason. But aside from that, nah. And I think this is Prototype. Oh yeah, it is Prototype. Okay. Prototype is one of the better bronzes. He can sp she can spam blockbusters very, very easily by having... By using certain moves in order. And yeah, that's always nice, being able to use a blockbuster 3. Very quickly. Very spammable. But as a bronze, as you know, damage is always a problem. And Prototype does suffer from that, but still... Still a pretty solid variant for a bronze. Then we have Feline Lucky. Oh, okay. This one is also a meme. I guess she's slightly better because you can use her, but 2% chance, or was it 3%? It's very, very low. So unless you're doing like some infinite head loops, I don't see you activating her ability that often. The, the, the position every 7 seconds is quite nice though. But then again, Misfortune has taunts to give her precision on demand, so you might not need it. And then there's Megasonic. Huh. Unlike other big bands, Megasonic wants to use a very specific moveset that can only deal like one hit to make use of his enrages. Not a great one. It's kind of limited. But, you know, getting those enrages really fast just by blocking is nice. And I suppose there's a better way to use him somehow, but I haven't figured that out yet. So, still an enigma, I guess. Right, that video is done. How many more do I have? Two. Okay, let's do this. Right, next video is... Oh, this is Rerun, yeah! So if you guys didn't know, I made a video about Rerun a f month ago or so. Pretty cool video, check it out if you want. I found a team that could use Rerun very well, but again, as a support, you don't need to evolve her as Diamond. She could just stay in your back as a Bronze, so this is just also for the memes. But, you know, Rerun as a Diamond, that's still very funny. Next we have Cold Stones. Cold Stones is a useful bronze and gold carry, but she do he does fall off like at, at late game because he doesn't have enough attack to sustain him. Aside from that though, like he's just a beginner variant. Nothing much to do. Nothing much to stay. Once you get a Wolf's Bane, just abandon Cold Stone and use Wolf's Bane instead. Ivy League. Okay, so Ivy League, I haven't really used her that much. She plays slightly differently than other parasols because she wants to explode tears, I think. I forgot. I forgot what her signature ability is. <laughs> but yeah, I kind of like to compare her with Noah Gretz, and I find Noah Gretz slightly better, but you know, Ivy League still does something unique. She can inflict slow and wither to get rid of blockbusters. I don't find her that great though. And then we have Necro Breaker again, just a flex. Nothing much to say here. The ability to recover her health very easily is quite nice though. But her attack is pretty low. 
But I could see her being used in like Rift Battles and in 1v1 to make sure you get that health bonus up. So that is a niche. And Squiggly does have a pretty good kit with Curse and Hex available. Maybe not Hex, maybe Curse, just Curse. Oh, and then we have Decrypted. Arguably the worst Eliza. I don't think Lapis Li Luxury and Mummy Deers are the worst. Maybe I'm wrong. Decrypted just can... What does she do again? I think she can hit numbers, but even then it's not high, as Eliza's don't have a high attack. And she, as outside of like pure damage bonus, she doesn't do anything else. Yeah, she, it's just extra bonus damage. Which I guess is nice, but would love to have something else aside from that. Alright, last one, and this one is the one I just evolved a week ago. First up is Vintage Virtuoso, a really cool Big Ben variant. I think he's like, again, a puzzle. There are definitely interesting ways to use him, but I haven't figured that out yet because I don't play Big Ben, and, you know, Big Ben's combo game is insane, so there's a lot of things you can do with him, and yeah, I think he's, he's promising. If anyone has any way or found any way to use Vintage Virtual, so feel free to give me a shout. I'd love to cover him if I can. And next, I guess, is Bloody Valentine. Okay, so I just evolved this last week, so I have no opinion on her. But she's... What does she do again? She gained health and meter every time she uses a blockbuster and special move or something. I guess it's useful for recovery. But Eliza's biggest problem is not recovery, she can get that very very easily, is the fact that she has low attack and Bloody Valentine doesn't provide any damage output to help her with that. Right, we have Mismatch, which is the weird double of all the all the rest of the doubles. Unlike the other doubles, I put Volatility with her, just because, it's kind of funny. I want to see if I can make use of her in a way to make use of her precision stacks. But she's not all that great, to be honest. And then we have Triple Threat. Not gonna lie, I evolve her because I am running out of Light Golds. I don't have High Ruler or Grim Fan, which are the only um, Light variants I need to evolve. And I didn't have them, so I am stuck with Triple Threat. And then lastly, we have Night Terror, which I know because I don't have any other any fodder and Night Terror is the only one left to evolve. All I gotta say is that she has a really really cool palette. I really like her white spider look. But her abilities, eh, slightly on the weaker side. But anyway, I'm just gonna wrap it up guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. Hopefully, you won't see this again.